All right, welcome. In this video, I want to do another example of a pumping lemma proof. And for this one, I've just chosen a very similar language to the one that I've already covered. I just want to get us a little bit of practice working through this. So I want to, what I want to do is I'm going to prove a little theorem here. L0 is not regular, okay? And I'm going to do that. It's a proof using the pumping lemma. And proofs using the pumping lemma are always proofs by contradiction. So our first uh, step is to assume that L0 is regular. Okay, so we assume L0 is regular, so the pumping lemma should hold. And again, our proof here is using the pumping lemma. So if you haven't, then we just review the pumping lemma. Maybe it appears somewhere earlier so that our readers can review it as well. Our next step then is to select a string from our language that is longer than the pumping length P. So I'm going to pick a very simple, usually when we have a variable like an N showing up in our language like we do here, we uh, usually plug in our P for that N. So I'm going to say, let S be uh, A to the P, B to the P, C to the P, which we know is a language or an element of our language L0. Also, we know that this, the length of this string S is greater than p which is what we need to show that uh, so the pumping uh, properties will hold okay so now usually what i want to do is i want to review what two of the properties is going to are going to help us uh, learn about our string s now what we're going to do is we're going to split our string s so let uh, s be equal to x y z such that, well, what was our first property? The length of x, y must be less than or equal to p. So what does that tell us about, well, x and y, but really it's y, remember, the y is the pumpable p, so y is the one that we're interested in. So what does it tell us about y? It tells us that y can't be a b or a c, right? Because that first p symbols at the beginning here are only a's so y contains only a's also y the length of y must be greater than zero so y contains at least one of the a's so we know it contains only a's and it has at least one a those are our critical bits because now we can start pumping so previously you often in this case i like to pump down so let's try and pump down so let's consider x y to the 0, z, which is going to be x, z, which in our case, we know this is going to modify the number of a's. Initially, we had p of them, but we're going to end up losing however many y has in it because we've deleted y out here. And then our b's are going to remain unchanged and our c's are going to remain unchanged. So this string is this going to be an L0? No, because our, we, we don't have a match. So this is not in our language L0. That's enough for us to conclude. So the pumping lemma does not hold. So L0 is not regular. And that completes our proof. So this was one example. I think I want to do another example. Okay, so let's consider this language here. This is an interesting one. It's a string of zeros and ones, but it's two strings back to back that are the same. So you might have like zero, zero, one, zero, and then zero, zero, one, zero. And then that would be two copies of our string W. This would be a yes, right? So this is an interesting case. So we want to show that this is not a regular language. It's certainly an interesting language, but it's not a regular language. So again, we're going to start out with a theorem. L1 is not regular. And we're going to do a proof using the pumping lemma again. So again, we start out, again, it's a proof by contradiction. So we start out by assuming it is regular and we continue from there. So if L1 is regular, again, that means the pumping lemma is going to hold. So we now want to start working with the pumping lemma. What does the pumping lemma tell us we should do next? We should pick some string S that's longer than P. So it's in this case where we're going to be picking our string S where we want to be careful, we have a lot of degrees of freedom about what W is. And the only thing that matters to us right now is that the length of W should be greater than or equal to P. That way our pumping lemma 
uh, proof can go through. Now again, lots of degrees of freedom here. One of the possibilities we might pick here is we could say w is 0 to the p, so we would have 0 to the p, 0 to the p, or 0 to the 2p. Now the problem with this string is this particular choice of string is actually pumpable. There are ways that we can divide it up into x, y, and z. In particular, if we make y two zeros, then every time we pump it, we will always get an even number of zeros, and it will always satisfy this condition and always be a member. So this is a slightly harder language to work with because we pick a pretty obvious string and it doesn't work. This string is pumpable. Okay, so that string's pumpable. Let's not pick that one. So what can we do to make it more, you know, less pumpable, I guess? Okay, well, one thing that matters with this is that these two symbols are the same. And so when we pump them, where that dividing line between them is can move around in this big old mass of zeros and it doesn't help us. If we had some symbol, any symbol, I'm gonna put a question mark for now in there, it would change things up. If we pump the left hand side, the question mark would move back and forth and that would be problematic for our argument, at least our pumpable argument over here. That's exactly what we want. And this is what I mean by sometimes when we are making these arguments, we don't, we go back and forth. We pick an S, we maybe pick this one first and it didn't work, and then we pick a new one. I'm actually gonna use that idea and I'm only gonna put a single one in here. We could also do one to the P, which is a common uh, choice for this particular language, but I like just the one. The one is basically a placeholder that's saying this is where the first block ends and this is where the first block or the second block begins. So the one is that dividing line. So I'm going to pick this one and see if it works. Zero to the P, one, zero to the P, one, which we know is in our language because it satisfies our pattern here. And the length of S is greater than P. Again, it's 2P plus 2, so again, we know it's greater than P. Okay, so the pumping, uh, so the pumping property should hold. Okay, so again, let's go through that same logic and hopefully we're starting to see patterns with this logic, okay? So since, what do we know? Since um, S is equal to X, Y, and Z, and the length of xy, what was our rule about that one? It had to be less than or equal to p, okay? Remember what that's telling us? The y must be in this first block, so y contains only zeros from the first block, okay? So our y contains only zeros from the first block. And since we know that the length of y is greater than uh, zero, we, or it's not empty, we know there must be at least one zero inside y. So again, let's do some pumping. This time let's pump up just cuz, okay? So x y squared z is equal to what? It's gonna be zero to the p plus the length of y extra zeros in that block. The one placeholder that we put in there has moved along so that we can see that indeed this second block is different than the first block. We can't, there's no muddying the waters anymore. The one makes it very clear for us here. Since these two numbers are not the same, we know that this is not in the language we're looking for. And so the pumping lemma does not hold. And that of course concludes our proof. We can just say, uh, and so L1 is not regular. Okay, and we can see that this one was a little bit harder to come up with that, the right string that was gonna work. But once we got it to work, a lot of the same argument still keeps coming in there. Our, our, two, our two properties help us argue it only contains some zeros from this block and that it must contain at least one so that when we pump it, we know those blocks start to be coming out of proportion according to how they're defined. All right, and that concludes the proofs that I wanted to do in this quick exercise. So thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you in those next videos.